build your talent ecosystem, to mean that you're surrounding yourself with great talent, you're connecting with them, engaging with them, nurturing with them, interesting content, changing their perception about you and your business, piquing their interests, getting them interested in you and your business, and then making sure no one falls through the cracks because you're just pinging them a, sh a short message. G'day team, Joshy. I hope you're having an amazing day. We've just finished an incredible training session for our bordering clients. And I just wanted to share with you the key kind of, the key takeaways from, from our training session. I've been thinking about this a lot because recruitment is really hard at the moment. Like there's still the skill shortage and there's still, you know, particularly for my business owner clients, like there's still, they could put on more people tomorrow, but they just can't find great talent and great staff to bring into their business. And so I prepared this training for them and I just want to kind of take you through the overview. I guess to kind of set the scene, like the, the, I guess the big mistakes I see business owners making when it comes to recruitment is like not having, like everything's so short-term and focused, so short-term focus, so to speak. So it's, it's very short-term focus and very, very reactive. And it's like, we really highlighted this today to, to our boardroom clients that when recruitment is reactive and not well thought out and very short term, i.e. Holly Dooley, we just ran, won this massive project. We need to find people to staff it up or, you know, Holly Dooley, our marketing efforts have been paying off. We need to, you know, find three more people. It's so short term focused and so reactive, which is what makes it so stressful because you've got this pressure of a project or a pipeline or deliverables and you don't have the current team. So then you're putting all of this pressure on a short-term strategy to get more people into your business. And so that's the first kind of big, uh, I guess, mistake I see business owners making is it's recruitment is reactive and short-term focused. The second big mistake is that like they've got no longer-term strategy for bringing great people and great talent into their business. So it's like we, again, it's short-term focus, it's reactive, and we haven't really thought about a longer-term strategy to actually bring people into our world. And I guess the, the third big mistake is like no follow-up process for staying in touch with high value candidates who weren't ready at the time. And so like with this training today, it's about getting our clients to think differently about recruitment. And the training we ran today was all about building a talent ecosystem. So really getting an ecosystem of amazing future potential staff members into your world, into your ecosystem, nurturing them and you know, when the time's right, eventually bringing them into your business. So if we can get this piece right in terms of working out on our talent ecosystem and, and making the recruitment easier, like recruitment won't be as reactive. You'll have, you know, access to a much wider pool of potential candidates. You'll actually have a system in place for staying in touch with high value candidates so they don't fall through the cracks. And you'll have a clear, like long-term strategy for bringing great people and great talent into your business. So what I wanted to do is like, because recruitment's so hard, I just wanted to kind of share the main kind of takeaways from today's training, you know, hopefully because it helps you and hopefully it helps, you know, make your recruitment journey a lot easier. So we spoke through kind of three, three main or three big ideas, three main areas. Like, so the first was surround, like the first is surround and the second is nurture and the third is track and follow up. And like with the surround piece, this is kind of the bottom of the pyramid. We want to be casting a net really, really wide. Like, again, like, and actually, before I do that, I want to jump back a step. The reason why I ran today's training is because if you think about, for my boardroom clients, if you think about all the people that are out there at the moment that could come and work for you in your business. So out of 100 potential people out there, or so, say, say there's 100 potential people out there that come, could come and work for you for your business, 50% of those people right now are like they're a year away, like they're not interested at all. They could work for you in your business, but they're not ready. They're not interested. And now it's not the right time. When we do a recruitment drive, a recruitment strategy, we're talking to such a small group of people because we've got people that are ready now. They're frustrated with the current job. They're looking to move. And so we put an ad out. We get a recruiter on board to come and help us. We get some candidates to apply, but it's just such a small portion of the overall net. So I ran some numbers with our, with our clients today, like of a hundred people who could potentially work with you, you and your business, there's probably 10 people out there at the moment who are ready, interested, willing, all those sorts of things, who ticks to like the now bucket. Then there's probably 30 to 40 of those people who are 
ready, they're interested, but they need more time. They maybe they need some more proof about you and your business. They need to understand you and your world. Then there's probably another 25 of those people that are like, not interested, could work for you, but I'm pretty happy where I am. They're probably a year plus away. And then there's probably 25 people that are just never, ever going to work for you. And so when we approach recruitment as this short-term stressed kind of strategy, we're really only talking to those 10 people that are ready now, but see your ad, they get tapped on the shoulder by a recruiter, they apply, they go through the process and maybe you make them an offer, maybe you don't. But we're really only talking to those 10 out of 100. Whereas the strategy that I want to take you through and the strategy we talked to our boardroom clients today is I want you to have access to at least 75 out of 100. Like there's a 25 that are just never, ever going to work and that's fine. But if we could be talking to 75 out of 100 instead of 10 out of 100 every time we do a recruitment thing, um, we're just giving ourselves such better odds and opportunities of one, not having the stress of short-term resourcing issues. Two, it's just like we've got access to such a bigger pool of potential candidates. And three, it's just like it's just a better strategy. It just makes more sense. And it just means that you've got access to a wider pool of people who you can tap on the shoulder, have a conversation with, and you can be more strategic about your highs as opposed to being more reactive. So if you dive down into the weed, like the, the, the three big ideas, surround, nurture, track, and follow up. So the surround piece is really like you want to cast your net wide and you want to get people into your talent ecosystem. You know, and the platform that we talked about today for our clients is LinkedIn. Like I think LinkedIn is probably one of the best platforms out there. So, so, so underutilized and underappreciated in terms of people actually using it to its full capability, but it's probably the best platform out there. People can check you out. They can see you. Um, they can follow you and your business. There's a messaging platform in there. They can check out your website. It's kind of non-invasive and those sorts of things. So we want to surround ourselves, cast the net wide, and bring people into our world through reaching out, connection requests, bring people into our ecosystem on LinkedIn. We then want to nurture. So we then want to nurture the people who are in our world. We then want to kind of nurture them in terms of we want to use that opportunity that we have of bringing people into our town ecosystem, then kind of showcase us, showcase, sorry, showcase you, showcase your business, talk about the cool projects that you're working on, the work from home Fridays or the tropical shirt Fridays or the bring your dog to work day or the cool projects and the cool clients and the barbecues and all sorts of stuff. You want to nurture people and showcase you and your business. With the nurture strategy, you also want to change perception. So there is this real perception at the moment with small to medium-sized businesses that people are like, why would I leave big corporate where I'm working on these massive projects and I'm pretty much guaranteed a job to come and work for someone who's like feast and famine? That's a very real kind of thought process that is going on in your potential candidates' brains. So you want to change that perception. You want to show that you've got a great pipeline of work. You want to show that you are doing cool things. You're working on a great variety of things. You're, you're, you know, you, you've got great initiatives for your staff and that you're doing four-day weeks, nine-day fortnights, all these sorts of things. You want to change the perception, change the story that's happening in your potential candidate's brain to go, well, that's pretty cool. Look what they're doing compared to what I'm getting here in this big corporate kind of gig. So you want to get people interested. So with the nurture strategy, it's showcasing you and your business. It's changing people's perception of you and your business and getting them interested. And, and change, so when you change perception, they're like, I could actually see myself working there. That looks pretty cool. That looks like fun. Geez, they're working on some great projects. Oh, and they've got this and they've got that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out to them. I'd love to work with them. How would people ever, ever know what's going on behind the scenes in your business unless you tell them and talk to them about that? So that's the nurture piece. So surround, get people into your talent ecosystem, nurture them through great content, through connection, all those sorts of things. And the third big idea is tracking and following up. I think too many of us, and this is like not just staffing, this is like invoicing, this is BD, this is like the follow-up. We're so bad at the follow-up. We're so bad at the follow-up because we don't have a system in place for the follow-up. So what we talked about today is just like a really simple kind of reminder system, like an Asana or a Trello or something like that, where, you know, people who came through the recruitment process, but either weren't ready, accepted another offer for whatever reason, didn't come and work with you, just create a simple card and check in with them in three months time or six months time or 12 months time. People who you are connecting with on LinkedIn, 
who are not ready yet, but you you know you know that they would be a great candidate. Put them in your list, connect with them, engage with them, follow them up. Make sure that no opportunities fall through the cracks, because that's one of the biggest kind of areas I think business owners let themselves down is like they create all these opportunities, but then they don't do the follow up and they let things fall through the cracks and because they don't have a system for the follow up. So Tina, there's three, three big ideas that we spoke with our boardroom clients today, surround, nurture, track, and follow up. And this is all coming together to kind of build your talent ecosystem to mean that you're surrounding yourself with great talent. You're connecting with them, engaging with them, nurturing with them, interesting content, changing the, their perception about you and the, your, your business, piquing their interests, getting them interested in you and your business, and then making sure no one falls through the cracks because you're just pinging them a, sh- a short message in three months time. Hey, such and such, how's things going? Hey, such and such, it's been a while since we've talked. How's work going for you? Just like simple, non-invasive kind of messages that kind of means that you're just re-engaging with those people to keep you and your business top of mind. Team, I hope that helps. Like I'm just fresh off this training. It's all in my brain. Just wanted to kind of get it out there for you. So hopefully that helps. And yeah, look, if you, if you want to keep doing this business journey on your own, we have a ton of free resources to help you keep doing that. Podcast, YouTube channel website, all those sorts of things. But if you want to get some help and sit on, sit in on some trainings like we just ran today, getting the workbook, getting the scripts, getting the strategy so that you can just basically, like all our boardroom clients today have left that training and they can just plug that strategy straight into their business. If you want some help growing your business, I'd love to have a combo with you about joining boardroom. So if that's you, your business owner of a consultancy within the engineering industry and you want to remove the overwhelm, follow a roadmap, get some help, to grow your business properly, reach out. Let's have a chat and see if we can work together in boardroom. Have an awesome day.